government should have done better um, in ensuring that uh, the almost 3,000 Nigerians in uh, uh, Khartoum, especially, uh, or the whole of Su Su Sudan, are catered for as soon as it was clear that things were breaking down, even before uh, the, the, the actual exchange of fire, uh, we should have been thinking about what do we do to get our people out. That's what a country that is worth being called a country does, to provide for the security of its citizens wherever they are. So it doesn't have to be to take a group because most of the uh, students are students from the northern part of the country. Um, uh, uh, and that's why the CNG was the one issuing the statement. But it doesn't matter who issues the statement. The fact of the matter is we have been lax. You mentioned the fact that Nigeria is planning. Planning was the word you used. Uh, um, it's not that evacuation is, uh, is, is taking place. The Ethiopians were allowing other citizens of other countries to enter Ethiopia. Our students that took it upon themselves to, to try to find their safety when their government is not rising up for them were being turned back by, from what I, I, I just saw in, in some video going viral, were being turned back that they hadn't the visa to enter. That tells you about the extent to which our government really cares about its citizens. Because every Nigerian, and I listened to Aliko Dangote, complaining about how even he, the richest man in Africa, because he's carrying a Nigerian passport, is treated around the world. What's our government doing in, in ensuring that, yes, we get better uh, respect than is currently the case? Our government should have done better um, in ensuring that... Uh... Yeah, um, well, uh, that was Professor Babafemi Badejo talking about the situation in Sudan right now. And one line I got from there, a country that is what being called a country should have done better should have done X, Y, Z that enumerated. When you saw that things were degenerating, you should have acted rather than leaving it to this point. And I, I, just, I just don't want, I just can't uh, wrap my head around the fact that Nigeria was still, as I said yesterday, planning until maybe because they have the uh, uh, peace, um, air peace, offering to take them for free. That is why an action is going to be done today. And moreover, they are saying 2,000 about 2,000, out of the 5,500 or more. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, that takes us back to something that Chris Kende uh, Mwando said, uh, the, the analyst yes, that yes. joined, that there was a time when Nigeria, in such a situation, would quickly evacuate its people and even help, help countries, countries from uh, citizens from other countries to move and then they start finding their way home from yeah. Nigeria. So you ask the question, when did the ball stop bouncing? Who dropped the ball? Mm -hmm. Who dropped the ball? Why is Nigeria retrogressing? Because that's, this is not the first time this is happening. And it's rather unfortunate that our children have to be left to themselves to begin to look for how to help themselves out of such a situation. When you're in a war situation, no, no, nothing you read in a textbook will matter. Because now they're saying, don't seek self-help. But how confident are they that their government is going to do something, even if they say it? And those are the issues. And now... Why is it that Nigerians of all the countries, Nigerians alone, will not be allowed access into other countries where people are seeking asylum, at least temporary asylum, uh, until these, their countries evacuate them or until the war is over? That and begs the question, what value first, does Nigeria yeah, have so, out there? Yeah, so when you brandish your passport, I'm a Nigerian, does it bring good to you or bring evil to you? Does it bring pride to you or bring something else to you? It's terrible. Okay, um, I think we're being joined by um, uh, Dr. Onimode Abdullahi Bandele, the Director of Special Duties, NEMA, and Chairman uh, for the Evacuation of Stranded Nigerians in Sudan. Let's see if he's there. Dr. Uh, Bandele, good morning and welcome to the program. 
Uh, I think his microphone is doing ceasefire as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even funny. Yeah. Um, we need to have this discussion because we were supposed to have had him yesterday and yes. then we, we couldn't have him because of glitches and mm -hmm. we just cannot afford this glitch because Nigerians want to hear from him mm -hmm. being in charge of the evacuation of the stranded Nigerians in Sudan. Do we have him on? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Okay. Dr. Onimode Good. Abdullahi Bandale, it's good to Thank have you. you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So the question on our lips and on the lips of every Nigerian is, when are our people coming to Nigeria from Sudan? Uh, good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. Like uh, you must have heard, I was told the general public yesterday, the movement from Khartoum to Egypt is to commence today. And it's until that start that, we'll start, uh, that we can give you a definite time when they will be in Nigeria. Because the distance between Khartoum and uh, our port, where the early will take place, is over a thousand kilometers. So you can imagine what it will take them before they arrive at their destination. Okay, but we hear that there are up to 5,500 or above people stranded in Sudan of Nigerian's origin, Nigerian origin. Uh, now we're hearing also, maybe it's true or not true, that only about 2,000 will be airlifted today from Sudan to wherever you're taking them before they get to Nigeria. Are these the actual figures or we, uh, you have uh, different figures? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when this initial plan started, we started with a population of about 5,000 stranded Nigerians. <laughs> but that yesterday, I confirmed from the ambassador in Khartoum that the plan is to move 3,500 stranded Nigerians into Egypt for airlift. Let me quickly add that as I speak to you, the Director General of NEMA, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, is already on ground in Egypt for the past four days, working in conjunction with our uh, Ambassador, His Excellency Ambassador Nasir Rimi in Egypt, coordinating the, the reception for these Nigerians at the border of Sudan with Egypt. So that is where we are at this morning. All right, your agency and indeed the federal government have received knocks for the delay in action. But we're not going to dwell on that because we're moving forward from that to this day where we now have a situation where they are bearing the process to evacuate them has begun. I want to know uh, the level of communications you have with Nigerians there and if they are all safe, if there are no casualties and exactly their state of welfare at this point in time. Uh, thank you very much. Let me quickly uh, uh, dispel that impression that Nigeria was slow to act. It was a crisis situation. I will not because we want to get our uh, nationals out and endanger anybody's life. You, you must have read from the news that even Egypt, that is closer to Sudan, just... Uh, concluded the evacuation yesterday, and they lost an official in the process. Nigeria don't want to go into that. We don't want to lose official. We don't want to lose any of our citizens. We are waiting for a safe corridor, which we now have to move these people out. Concerning communication, the embassy is in touch with Nigerian nationals in, in uh, Sudan. And it is the same embassy that has communicated to them the time and venue for the departure to Egypt. Okay, but since you've touched on the topic, what actually did Nigeria do? What were, were the arrangements like? Because right now, what we hear is that an airline of Nigerian origin has volunteered to take these children free of charge. If he hadn't volunteered, what did the government do? Because these are some of the things that make people not to trust uh, the words of government. And that's why maybe some of them were seeking self-help. And the government had to send a message that they should stay in house <coughs> and wait. So what actually was the plan of government before Air Peace volunteered 
to leave this people. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for the for the Nigerian national that's uh, self-evacuated, we feel their pain. We we know what it was uppermost in their mind was safety. Yeah. However, it is a wrong impression that we folded our arms in the in our planning process. Commercial airlines of Nigerian origin were already contacted before the goodwill of Mr. Oyama Allen. I must confess to you that I spoke with him personally yesterday. I is in very high spirits that he will be ready to commence evacuation as soon as information reaches his airline. That will only happen to when we have a safe movement between Khartoum and Egypt. All right, um, let's throw some light on this issue which has been on the lips of Nigerians since yesterday. And that is the fact that the students made some effort to help themselves, they tasked themselves $100 each uh, so that they could exit through Khartoum into uh, Ethiopia, but they were not allowed passage, while nationals from other countries were allowed passage. Can you uh, throw more light on that? Is that true? And if that is true, why did the Nigerian students receive such treatment from the Ethiopians? Thank you very much. Uh, let me quickly add here that my line of communication, or the line of communication between us at home and Nigerian national in Khartoum is through the embassy. There was no student body that we spoke to. There was no information from the embassy that students are being taxed to pay money. So as far as we are concerned at the agency, we are not aware of that. However, we are not unaware that some students tried to self-evacuate to Ethiopian border. And when they got stranded, efforts were made to speak to Nigeria ambassador in Addis Ababa, who did a note baba to the uh, government of Addis. I have not confirmed this point what is the position of that note baba. But to say Nigerians were denied, these are inter country movements that are diplomatic in nature. So I will not want to dwell on, uh, comment much on that because I'm not. Uh, Sadu would be the responsibility of that diplomatic assignment, but rather the Nigerian ambassador in Addis Ababa is handling. This movement of the citizens out of uh, Sudan is very timely. You know, it, 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 it tallies with the timeline given for the ceasefire. But what if the ceasefire breaks down again? Because we've seen it the first time. This, before it even began, the fighting still continued. So. What if this one breaks down and it doesn't last for the 72 hours that is projected to last? Is there a, a, a plan B? Uh, uh, thank you? you very much. That is why we said before that information went out, the, our, our embassy in Khartoum has worked out all these modalities to ensure that we are not cut off should in case there is another breakdown in the ceasefire. So we are very optimistic that we will have been out before any uh, ceasefire breakdown. If that happens. Okay. All right, just before we go, you've said that before, just uh, for emphasis. clarity and emphasis. So there is an ongoing process to get them out of Sudan as we speak. The, the first batch of Nigerians are going to be, the, the Nigerians who have acquitted are going to be in a convoy of 40 buses. That I can confirm to you. 40 buses to Egypt. Yes, to Egypt from Khartoum. What of the second batch and the final batch? I don't yes. know how many batches there will no, be. What I'm saying is the people that are, are marked to move now already have 40 buses on ground. So as it's a process. Okay. As it continues, I will update you since I'm in touch with your station. Okay. Dr. Nimode Abdullah Bandele is the Director of Special Duties, NEMA, and Chairman for the Evacuation of Stranded Nigerians in Sudan. Thank you so much for your time and updates on the situation, which is very before critical. I, before I go, let me correct the impression. The Director General of NEMA, uh, Mustafa Abibame, is the Chairman of the Federal Government Committee on this evacuation. I am like his operation officer based at home here. Thank you. Thank okay. you for the correction. Thank Noted. you so much. Okay, yeah, um, we've been talking to him, and it's been, you know, it's gladdening that uh, 
we were able to talk to him and we've been assured that um, our people are going to be evacuated. We can't wait for the last of them to leave Sudan. Whatever happens next is, is less dangerous than being in a country that is fighting now, fighting with itself, not fighting rebels this time around. It's, I've not heard it before that a government just fights itself. Uh, the opposition, as it were, was supposed to be the leader, was supposed to be the prime minister of the, of the country. And so government and government, just fighting is more dangerous because now you don't know who to run to. Both of them are fighting. <laughs> so well, it's terrible. the government, the military of the country, and those that the government put in place, <laughs> the president, the man in charge, had put in place mm -hmm. for himself as plan B, mm -hmm. clashing. That's what's going on. And it's unfortunate because at the end of the day, it is the grass that suffers. Yeah. It is Africa that suffers. Mm -hmm. It is Africans that suffer. It is us that are losing. We need to begin to look inwards and because see. Because at the end of the day, don't used. forget, humanitarian crisis will arise from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, that's it. We've been talking about our people, not children now, because the age bracket, some of them you can't call them children. But our people are in Sudan, but we are happy that they're going to be evacuated now. Uh, if you were not aware, uh, and, uh, okay, well... We are going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll be talking about what is happening in the Twitter space and the tech space as it is. So just stay with us.